The big question on a lot of home buyers' minds are, should they buy either late 2022 or in the beginning half of 2023? That's a difficult question to answer. There's been a lot going on, but, but I, towards the end of the video, I'll, I'll tell you what I think. Um, I think we need to look at where we've been. We've had this absolute crazy, unprecedented market that we have never, ever seen before. Inventory levels were extremely low and was driving bidding wars where people are going twenty-five, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars over asking. There's some communities that were going about ten percent over asking on average for a while, and it's just it's just a, a an insanely crazy market. So what's going to happen moving forward, and should you buy in the next six months? So let's take a look at some information that might be helpful for you to make an informed decision for yourself see whether you should buy in the next six months or so. There is no right or wrong, but uh, you gotta decide what's right for you. So basically, what's been driving this market is supply and demand. There's been so little supply of homes and a great demand from buyers. So in, in a balanced market, there's about a four to six month supply of homes on the market. In the past, year, year and a half, we've been seeing close to only about a one month supply on the market. And currently right now, there in Essex County, there is only a one month supply of homes on the market, meaning that if no new market homes came on the market, all the houses would be gone in a month. Um, now a buyer's market or an extreme buyer's market would be there would be more than four to six months of inventory on the market. And we have not seen that for a very, very long time. So at the end of the day, the market is driven by supply and demand. And there is more buyers in the marketplace than there are houses for sale, then we're gonna, we're gonna have a market that's, that's a seller's market where buyers are competing for homes. Now let's take a look at Essex County. So, you know, everybody is saying, oh, the market's gonna crash, the market's gonna crash. Now, I don't believe the market is gonna crash. It is very different than 2007, 2008 when the market crashed. And you know, when you look at inventory in Essex County, there was almost 6,000 homes on the market in 2005, which was considered a strong market. Today, there's only about 560 homes on the market in Essex County, almost 10% of what used to be on the market back in a, in a healthy market at the beginning of the um, century. And what's that showing us is there's an extreme shortage of housing for the population of buyers that want to buy a house. And that also, you know, you have to look at the rental market. The rental market has been going extremely crazy as well. Rents have been going through the roof. And you, you have to look at, you know, I've got to live somewhere. And so currently in Essex County, we've got um, a median house price of about 592,000. We've got about 560 houses on the market and homes are still selling. If, if you look at the past six month period, homes are still selling over um, asking at, at a, a rate of about 2%. This is the overall Essex County area. Um, again, that is not signs of a market that's crashing. Um, that's the signs of a pretty healthy market still. So I think moving forward, what, what I think we're gonna be talking about is we're gonna talk about a market correction and not the bubble bursting or a housing crash. So what's a market correction look like? A market correction is, you know, we're gonna see some uh, depreciation of home values, but not by a lot, you know, a couple of percent, maybe 5%, maybe 10%, you know, not, not a huge amount like we were seeing 50, 30%, you know, back um, in the 2007, 2008 market. So we're looking at a market correction and what's gonna happen is the housing market is gonna land into what, we call a neutral or a balanced market. And that's where neither sellers nor buyers are, are in favor or can demand what's gonna happen in the marketplace. It gives buyers the time to make decisions about houses. Sellers are gonna to have to work a little bit to sell their houses, you know, realizing they are competing with other houses on the marketplace. So a lot of it has to do with supply and demand and what the market will bear. And unless we start seeing huge inventory climbs in the market, we're not gonna be seeing a whole lot of changes in the market as far as price depreciation goes. 
The other thing is that, you know, the experts are all over the place. We've got experts saying the house market is going to crash. We've got the experts saying, no, we're still going to see appreciation of, you know, one to 4% over the next year through 2023. Um, if we actually knew what was going to happen, we'd all be rich because we, we would know. So that leads me to tell you that, you know, the real estate market is highly spec speculative about where it's going to go. And when you're in any financial market, whether it's real estate, uh, the stock market, speculating is a very dangerous thing. Um, I've had buyers back in 2018 that didn't want to buy because they thought the market was going to crash. And then here we are four years later and house prices have appreciated 30% and they've been priced right out of the marketplace. So you have to kind of take all this in, in stride and, and put it all together. I don't think we're going to have a market crash. I think we're going to have a market correction and it's just going to be a much more balanced market. Now the um, economist for uh, National Association of Realtors is expecting a 1-2% to appreciation in house prices in 2023. And then in 2024, he's expecting an 8 to 10% appreciation in house prices. So it looks like, you know, there may be a small pullback in house prices, but it's not going to be huge. And there's a chance they could still actually go up. Now, as far as interest rates go, again, the experts are all over the place on that. You know, we have experts saying they're going to be 5%. We have experts saying they're going to be 9%, but, you know, up to the middle of 2023. You know, prices, mortgage rates going up, which today they're around 6%. If they went up to 9%, you know, you're not going to be in a better position to buy. Now, if they go down to 5%, um, that could be more favorable for you. But there's going to reach a point where, you know, in the, in the low fives or the high fours, we're going to go back to that crazy market because more buyers are going to come out. And then you've got to think about... You know, do I want to buy in that crazy market where I have to give up home inspections and, you know, do crazy things like, uh, you know, let, let sellers stay in the house for two or three months after you actually purchase the house. Um, so it puts you kind of in a lot less favorable position. And then you're talking about, you know, going over asking, you know, for two years, I, I don't think I sold the house that didn't go you know, 10,000 or more over asking. And in some cases, I mean, I was writing offers for over 50 to to $100,000 more than the asking price and still losing the offers in some cases or, or being the highest bidder on the property. Um, so if interest rates go low enough, we're gonna go back to that crazy market unless housing inventory climbs. And when we talk about housing inventory, we also don't have a lot of foreclosures in the marketplace. Foreclosures are still lower than they were pre-pandemic and you know 2008 2007 we saw a lot of foreclosures flooding the market and it was dragging the prices down um, and, and it was just bringing a lot more inventory onto the market one of the things you have to remember is you have to live somewhere unless you have the ability to live with a parent rent free um, and save your money uh, you got to live somewhere and most of the time that means paying rent and you know, do you, you know, with an average rent in Boston hitting about thirty-seven hundred dollars, you can actually buy a pretty nice house in the suburbs for a thirty-seven hundred dollar a month mortgage. So you know, you got to balance. You got to live somewhere. And, and also, there's forces in life that that cause us to want to buy. It could be in addition to the family. It could be a job. It could just, you know, there's there's many forces that it, it might be a, a an elderly parent moving in with you and you need to buy a new house that can, can suit both of you. And uh, those forces are always going to be there no matter where the market is. And it's going to force some people to still want to buy a home and, you know, where are they going to go? Um, waiting till things are favorable might not be the smartest thing to do. You know, the other advice that I give any home buyer that comes to me, especially first time home buyers, is you know, they all, always worry about the market corrections, the peaks and valleys. And the one thing to remember is the real estate market over the 70 to 100 years they've been tracking it has gone like this. But in there are these peaks and valleys of house prices in there. And the question is, are you going to get caught in a valley? If you buy for the long haul, even if you buy on the high side, if you buy for the long haul, and when I say the long haul, minimum of seven years, but 10 plus years, if you find a house that's suitable, that's going to last for you, that you like, and, and you plan on hanging on to it, you're going to weather most of those storms and you're not even going to look backwards. 
yes, you could buy a house today and tomorrow it could drop 10, 20, well, not tomorrow, but you know, say six months from now, it might have dropped 10 or $20,000. But if you're buying for the long haul, it just buy the house and don't keep looking every day what, your, what you think your house is worth. And that will get rid of a lot of anxiety for you. 10 years from now, you're going to be happy you bought a house pretty much no matter what happens. Um, you know, we have the buyers from 2007 who are probably buying at their 2006, 2007, buying at the absolute peak today. You know, we're talking 14 years later, they're, they're not worried about what they paid for their house. They've made so much money in appreciation of their house. They just don't care. Buy for the long haul. Think the long haul. If you're buying for the short term, you're just going to be disappointed pretty much no matter what. You might get lucky, but again, it's a gamble and you shouldn't be gambling with your house. So what do I think is going to happen? Like I said, I think a, a housing market, a correction is going to happen. Things are going to pull back a little bit, but it's just going to be a more balanced market where it doesn't favor a seller, it doesn't favor a buyer, and people are going to be able to negotiate and get their home inspections and so on and so forth. But I think what it boils down to, you know, once you look at the information and where the market might be heading, is that if you can find the right house, it fits your budget, buy the house. It doesn't matter if you should wait six months or not. If the timing is right, buy the house now. So the big question you might ask, well, well what about interest rates? Well, so, okay, so you might pay 6% today, but say in a year or six months from now, interest rates are 5% refinance and you put yourself back in a, a favorable position. Inventory is not going to climb to a point where buyers are going to have the pick of everything that's going on. Not, not anytime soon, at least. Um, you know, the other thing you have to realize is there's a housing shortage throughout the country where we're probably three, 3 million units shy. And this has started since World War II, where um, we have not kept up with the housing supply. And then the uh, recession of 2008, a lot of builders went out of business. We weren't building. We have not kept up with that supply. It's going to take many, many, many years to get to that point. And this is what's driving the market. And this is what you have to realize. If you find a house you like, you can afford it, buy. If rates go down, refinance. I think waiting, um, if you don't have to buy, maybe wait, wait out, you know, four months or so and see where the market's headed. But I think in general, Waiting for the market to crash is probably going to be bad news for you, and you're going to be kicking yourself if you did. This is Kevin Vitale from Exit Beatrice Realty. Be happy to talk to you about your particular circumstances and what you would like to do with, uh, you know, whether it's time for you to buy, whether you should wait. I can help you get ready to buy, um, but call me at 978-360-0422.